Before we begin, click subscribe to stay up to date with all of our newest video content. Now we're going to go through the process of adding a little more complexity to this software here. And I'm going to show you how to create a library for a source. And this source could be something other than a CSV file. That's just what we're doing for simplicity's sake. This could be a secondary API like Salesforce or Zoho or something like that that we're trying to integrate with. And so I want to show you how you can split that code up so that it makes more sense both from a layout perspective and then from a usability perspective because each bit of code will be housed in its section. That code is reusable if I want to go from using Acumatica and Zoho to swap out with another source, for example. It makes it easy because all of my code that stays with Acumatica library is going to stay there. All the code that stays with this source model is going to stick with that section. So quickly now here, we're going to build our source model. And this is going to be an object that contains all the columns that are featured in our CSV file. So you'll have your account number, the description, the account class, the type, whether it's active or not flag, and your post option. And then from there, we'll be able to add the code that actually reads this file and take that out of our Acumatica client code and move it into somewhere that makes a little bit more sense from a organizational standpoint and from a reusability standpoint. Once we have our source model, we can go ahead and go into the, the main UI and add a reference back to our source library. Well, you can see we've already got that turned on in the Acumatica library. That just lets the different projects talk to each other, which is going to be really important for us. Now we'll add that method that's going to actually read the file um, and store it into a list that we can then use later in our code, in our UI code, to talk to the Acumatica library. And in that code, we can actually do our conversion, which you'll see in just a second here. All right. So just finishing up that code in lightning fast snap of a finger video quality fastness, we're able to go ahead and flip over and look at the UI controller, which is the class for in our simple UI. That's going to be the main driver or controller of our models. And here we'll just add a reference now to our source model class and the method that we were calling and created there to read the file. So no longer are we going to do that in this client load list. We're actually separating our code to make it more modular and more reusable for us. Now we're just going to add a simple using statement so that... Uh, we're referencing back to our source library, just like our reference. This is one of those prerequisites to being able to use that modular technology functionally. And then we're going to go ahead and in our UI, we're going to add a conversion of a conversion method to convert from the surface model to our destination model, which is, of course, Acumatica in this particular integration instance. Um, it doesn't have necessarily have to be. We could be going the other way around, and we could do that still in this modular code with Acumatica being the source and that other system being the destination. Lastly, we just override our load list method, creating a second type of method that allows us to put in a list account into it, and it will perform the same function as it did before in our Acumatica client. And we need to add some code in here to call our converter method and put it into a list of accounts. And so we'll call that here, name it load list, and set it equal to the output of our conversion method. A little bit of cleanup of the code here to use that overridden method now. And just to recap, we've got three modules, our source library, our simple UI and our Acumatica library. 
and each is kind of playing its part in a modular fashion. You've got the Acumatica client, which is now really focused on just putting the data into Acumatica, logging on, logging off, logging error messages. You have the UI controller that's playing the in-between of those two source libraries, the source model and the Acumatica library. It's doing the controlling, kind of like your remote control, saying this and that needs to be done. Yeah, it turns on your DVD, DVR, turns on the TV, displays what you want to display. It starts your program, starts recording the next program. That's really what the controller is for. And so this has been our integration to Acumatica video. Don't hesitate to reach out to CS3 if you need any help with your integration. Was this video helpful? Click subscribe to see more videos like this one.